When we left Vietnam, it was um, in April 1975. Um, it was uh, three days before the fall of Saigon. We uh, was waiting at the airport for 10 hours in our turn camp. Um, I remember um, Kong and I, we have to run to the big um, airplane, they call the Chinook, um, to get on uh, to fight for our space. I remember it's windy, it was very cold. We got so scared, we cried, and then at the same time, um, the, they tried to take up. At that point, um, I was really afraid of getting killed. Um, but obviously, we was happy that we got on the airplane uh, to be uh, booked and leave Saigon. One day he came home with his black eyes. And I said, oh my God, what happened to you? And Kong said, mom, you asked me not to defend myself. So this is what I got. So I thought I was wrong, advising him not to defend himself. Um, and after that, um, he, he should have to defend himself by talk back. Or if his friend come and pick on him and put him, he said, don't do that again, otherwise I'm going to do it. So he got in the fight with friends sometime, and after that, um, people stopped picking on him because they know that he's not easy anymore. From right here in the U.S. of A. Yo, the sun don't shine for He is the reigning U.S. Shidokan tournament champion. Last year, he was the United World Wushu Kung Fu champion. And in 96, the continuous sparring world champion. This is Kung Lee. spirit and drive um, it's very deep rooted uh, when I think it comes from his culture from his background I've come to the best I want to be the best myself so in order to do that you have to train with the best you know he, he was a leader by action a lot more than uh, by word there's very few pros out there that are as tough as Kung Lee. There's no amateurs out there that are as tough as, tough as Kung Lee. There might be somebody but we haven't seen him yet Kung Lee is, is a super tough guy. Uh, he's always going in, taking people out. Uh, I train with him, he just works me.
training is here is unbelievable. Um, it mixes in with lots of stuff. I mean, to put it lightly, when I first came to train here, after the morning session, I had to sleep for two hours afterwards. My body would not do anything except rest. Hey, hey. Hey. Right. Yeah. Let's go out. And then we have our training coach, Giovanni Jordan, who conditions us in the same respect. So I'm getting it from both ends. In the morning, we do our conditioning. And the type of training we do breaks you down so much physically that it breaks you down mentally. There's been times where I've had to hold back tears. And I consider myself a pretty tough character. I'm a fighter. I deal with pain all the time. But to push yourself beyond your limit and then even past that, it's pretty unbelievable, and there's just been times where I've, I felt like quitting, and I, but I couldn't. Come on, Rudy. Our training isn't only let's get in the ring and beat each other up. We have a lot of other aspects to it. We will drill our wrestling. We'll kick the tie pads. We'll work on the heavy bag. But that's just inside here. We'll also go outside. We go over to the um, community college, run the stairs, do combination of stairs and punch kick drills. We, uh, we live close to a hill. We call it uh, the Suncrest. It's a monster. We'll, uh, one, one, I can remember specifically one afternoon, uh, we were all getting ready for some big fights. Me at the amateur level, coach at the, at the pro on, level, and he put on a 12-pound flak jacket, and he led the pack. We did what we would call good, a good, fireman good. run or, a, or an Stay Indian run, where the person in the back runs to the front, and we're going maybe about a mile and a half at a hill at a 15% grade. I know it's 15% grade because there's a sign that says 15% grade on the end of the hill, and we're going uh, straight up, it seems like, and we just keep chugging along, chugging along. Um, we, we train a lot, not only in here, but out also. We got a good, strong pace. This hill's no joke. Rudy's staying with me. Everybody's staying with me. They're getting strong. There's a car coming. It's starting to hurt. Bops. 30 million yards, everything's gonna kick in. And you're gonna see the facial expressions change, muscles are gonna get tight, but they're gonna push it on me because they're soldiers and they're determined. About 10 million yards, they're gonna, it's gonna, they gotta pull from their heart because muscles are gonna give out. The brain's gonna tell them they wanna stop, but they're not gonna stop. Let's go! Pick it up! You could say the hardest part is putting someone on your shoulders and running up bleachers and down and then punching and kicking mitts for 30 seconds and then having to run up again. But that's not the hardest part. You could say the hardest part is doing four rounds straight with Kung Lee and have him kick you in the, in the ribs, kick you in your legs, pick you up over his head and throw you on the ground. That's hard. That's extremely hard. But then you have to get right back up and do it again. So the, really the hardest part is what's in your mind and what's in your heart is being able to pick yourself off the ground, to make yourself run up those bleachers again. And that's within yourself. And the training we get and the inspiration I get from Kung Lee is what I've seen through his fights is that when he's been in that predicament or that situation, he's picked himself up and he's continued on. Go, 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 come on, you got 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left, let's go, let's go. Let's go.